What's up ADHD crew? Today I'm going to try my best to give you some help on how to manage your money as a person with ADHD. And I'm going to give you a few short-term quick fixes that you can apply today and a few long-term mindset shifts that you can practice working on every day. So when it comes to financial management, there's a few principles that I follow that I think is key for people with ADHD. Keep it simple, accessible and keep it visible. So first of all, try to identify what your key issues are when it comes to money. This could be things like not paying bills on time, making impulsive purchases, bouncing checks, and so on. So get yourself something like a whiteboard or just a plain sheet of paper and write your short-term goals and your long-term goals. This way you can get very clear about each goal and each issue, and you can try to work on each issue as you go along and cross them off the list. One thing I like to do is make a big visual, nice to look at budget. I know budgeting sucks, but if we can make it into a fun process, it's gonna be much more enjoyable and we can be proud of tracking our money. So if you like, make it colorful, color code it, make it nice to look at and presentable and keep it somewhere highly visible that you can see every day. That way it's always gonna be fresh on your mind and you've got a better idea of where the money is. The next thing I like to do is compile and store my important financial documents. Giving your documents a home and perhaps placing them in a file that's nice and orderly with color coded segments or just in a box is really helpful. And if you can store it somewhere that you visit frequently and perhaps even put a label on it, it's gonna be much more visible and accessible. So tip number three I think is really important step is automating payments in advance. Now, it can be a bit daunting doing this, but when you get round to it, it's gonna save you a hell of a lot of time. You can do this via online banking. If it gives you anxiety talking over the phone, it's very easy to do it nowadays over the internet. So if all your savings, all your outgoings are automated, that way you won't have to worry about paying it on time. However, you will have to take a note of this to make sure that you can have enough in your account so that you're not overdrawn and it doesn't bounce. Tip four is use visual apps. I've got a couple of favorites that I like to use. One is Yolt, but truth be told, there's loads of them out there. You just gotta find one that suits you the best. But when you set them up in advance and you get all your details and outgoings on there, it's out of the way. And a lot of the times these apps will notify you when you've got payments upcoming. Tip six is stop using the card, put it down. Start taking out cash instead. Start using cash and handling cash more often. That way you're going to see the money that you lose every time you make a transaction. If you can, when you're out and about, start withdrawing money from an ATM machine instead. It's far too easy to use a card and use contactless payment because you don't really have enough time to really think about what you're doing and you don't see the money that's draining from the account. That's the worst thing about it. It's a bit of a trap for us people with ADHD. So when it comes to debit cards and credit cards, some people even like to cut up their credit cards so that they can't use them. Now, it's important that you still make the payments on the card if you have them due, but if you're trying to really nail down your spending habits and it's too much of a temptation, then perhaps cutting up the card is actually a pretty good idea. If you're online and you see things that you want to buy, instead of immediately buying them, put them into a wish list. Websites like Amazon provide wish lists, or you can just write them down or type them up. But the idea is to postpone buying it immediately. Now, in some people, this might intensify the fantasy of buying things. So it might not work if it keeps the items on your mind all the time, but it can save a lot of people from impulse purchasing. Oh, and when you go grocery shopping, perhaps you want to eat before you actually go because you know what it's like. You just want to buy everything in sight that looks good because you're hungry. But the thing is, you're thinking with your belly rather than your logic. You'd be amazed at the effect it has on you psychologically. So get clear about what you want to buy beforehand. And this leads on to longer term mindset changes that I want to talk about. So you want to change your perspective overall. If you have an issue with spending, you really need to dig deep and ask yourself, is there a void that you're trying to fill? If there isn't, maybe you just saw it in the moment and you thought, hell yeah, I'm going to go for it. But ask yourself, is this going to benefit me by buying this now or is it going to harm me? Try to practice discerning your purchases more and perhaps look for alternative ways of getting that dopamine rush. Once you've bought it, the novelty is worn off very shortly. And of course, the cycle continues. Long-term mindset change two would be embrace minimalism. If you see my video on minimalism, I think the same can be transferred to money management. I think if you can whittle down your spending and outgoings into less things, it's gonna be easier to track them on your budget. So maybe you've got too many subscriptions. Maybe you can cut down on things that you're spending on every month and keep it to more fundamental things instead. The next step would be incentivize saving, right? Try to think of a goal by saving up some money. 
If you've got a long-term goal that you want and you keep it on your to-do list or you keep it anywhere visual as a reminder, it can deter you from spending. Ideally, you want to invest in something that's not a depreciating asset, something that you could possibly invest in and it'll be of benefit for a long time. Another important mindset tip, I think, is thinking about being more frugal in general. You can make being frugal and thrifty like a hobby. It could be a new challenge for yourself to develop your money-saving skills. So perhaps you can make it fun by always looking for the best deals, doing some research to find something that's cheaper, or perhaps practicing DIY methods of doing things. Another thing I think could help is if you practice postponing purchases. Maybe you should try sleeping on it. Instead of buying it straight away, see if you can go a whole day or a whole week before you buy it. Nine times out of 10 in my experience, once I've avoided buying something, I'm usually glad because I realize that typically the longer I'm debating buying something, the more I tend to realize that it's just not really necessary and that I can get by without. I can find another way or a cheaper alternative instead. 